Well, hey now, everybody. Uh, I had a horrible day yesterday, and I'll tell you why. And many of you might know this. Uh, uh, be prepared to have your head brought down by me today. And because uh, I don't even know where to begin with this horrible story and how sad I am. But uh, my dear, dear friend, Ralph. Ralph, of course, who calls into the show all the time, and Ralph, who has been at my side for so many years, has died. And I tell you, um, it's going to be difficult for me to get through this eulogy, this obituary, if you will. But uh, I just have been so sad and so angry. And uh, I think this is the toughest part of loving someone when you lose them. And uh, Lord knows I loved Ralph. And the reason, you know... Over the years, so many of you who listen to the show, and I know this is a shock to many uh, fans out there who either follow Ralph on Instagram or, you know, have just listened to the show and Ralph's been part of the show and Ralph, some people hated him, some people loved him, and that's what makes good radio. That's why I always loved when Ralph would call in. But aside from on the air, I've been friends with Ralph uh I'm bad with with math and I'm bad with years and remembering, but I know when Ralph graduated high school, I was on the radio at WNBC. So I've probably been friends with Ralph for maybe 40 years, something like that, or 35 years, some some ridiculous number like that. And he uh, was 58. So he was 58 if you years met old. Him at the high school age, you know, when he graduated, like 18 or 19. You can subtract it from that. So, I yes, absolutely. So, I want to say a few words about Ralph because uh, no one would love to have a few words said about him more than Ralph. And um, I don't think I have many people in my life, particularly men, who uh, I'm super, super close with. You know, I'm just, I just don't. And uh, for some reason, I know the reason, uh, Ralph and I uh, really hit it off years ago. And I'd say the main component of my relationship with Ralph is we love to laugh together. We had a very similar sense of humor. And Ralph worked for me. And so we would either be in my home or, or on, a, on a TV set or a... Uh, a movie set or the set of America's Got Talent, wherever we'd be, I'd be waiting backstage at Letterman. And I always loved to have Ralph around me because we would giggle. My wife said to me last night, you and Ralph have a secret language. And it's true. If you ever walked in the room and Ralph and I would be talking, uh, we'd be giggling and we, I mean, we could make... Uh, we would make we would make noises like uh, you know ear or uh, we we fondly called each other douchebag douchebag says what we would talk about various staff members um you know we we just had we had a great chemistry and we had a great friendship and Ralph was one of my bros and in fact I I came to think of Ralph as family Ralph was there uh. Early on in my career in New York, and uh, he'd be in my home. There weren't too many people I had over in my home, but Ralph would hang with me. We'd watch television together, and uh, we, we developed a very strong friendship. And I know a lot of people, you say to me, why are you friends with Ralph? Ralph's not uh, worthy of your friendship. And I'd say, what are you talking about? Ralph's, Ralph's my friend. I just enjoy him. You can't explain friendship. Uh, there were days we'd call each other on the phone or be together in person and, and spend hours talking as George Takei. Uh, Ralph is the reason I always start the show with, hey, now. Hey, now. Ralph was in love with the Larry Sanders show. And every minute he was, hey, now. Hey, now. And he was doing uh, impressions of Hank and uh, and uh, Gary Shandling and... Uh, it became so infectious that I so started going, hey now, hey now, and every, every minute, hey now, hey now, hey now, hey now. And uh, this is what we did. We, and, and somehow we would giggle. And Ralph had been there. Uh, I'll tell you another reason I love Ralph so much. He saw things, you know, in my personal life that really were private. 
And uh, we had many private moments, and never once did he betray me by, you know, talking about me or gossiping about me behind my back. I trusted Ralph. Ralph never, ever would, I would never hear from someone, oh, Ralph told me, or this or that or the other thing. He was a dear, dear friend of mine. And being friends with Ralph for me was very challenging at times because I became very angry with Ralph, as I still am. I'm, I'm experiencing great sadness and great anger because Ralph, his kryptonite was he didn't take care of himself. And a lot of that pressure fell on me. A couple of years ago, I had begged Ralph. I said, Ralph, you have to have health insurance. And he was playing a game of Russian roulette. He was not getting himself his uh, health insurance. And I did everything I could to convince him, uh, including, well, I won't go into it, but Ralph did eventually get health insurance, but it became a burden. And I said to him, Ralph, you're burdening me with the responsibility of taking care of you. And I'm, I'm, and that's not fair as a friend. And so he did get health insurance, but Ralph, uh, you know, I'd say, Ralph, you have to take care of yourself. And what ended up happening was Ralph developed an illness, but I really feel he got involved a little too late because the illness he got was curable and was treatable. But he had some complications of waiting too long, and I got very upset with him. I, 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 this, I was not ready for Ralph to go. I was not expecting Ralph to die. This is just mind-blowing to me. If anything, we used to joke that uh, I said, Ralph, you, you, you know, you're going to be around when I'm gone. Ralph was considerably younger than me. He's 11 years younger than me. I met Ralph when, when Ralph used to call into my radio show. He was in high school. He called in with his mom. That's how long I know this guy. He's younger than I am. I was already on WNBC radio in New York when he discovered my show, and that's how we got to know each other. But um, that was his kryptonite. He wouldn't take care of himself. Uh, he was a tremendously talented guy. When I met Ralph, we had no budget, and I needed to look like Larry King or something like that or Michael Jackson, and Ralph would make these elaborate prosthetics like in the movies or like Saturday Night Live, and he'd do them for, for zero money. And I said, you are so talented. And, and in fact, over the years, he got offered jobs to apprentice and learn how to become... You know, a, a, a guy who does these kinds of effects, but he didn't want to do it. He just wanted to work for me. He wanted to be my stylist. And so uh, Ralph was uh, my guy. And I have to say so many times, especially when things would just be going haywire in my life, I would call Ralph and Ralph would comfort me. There were times he was a great cheerleader. He would say to me, man, oh, that interview you did, I loved it so much. Or he'd look at one of my paintings. Wow, I can't believe what you're doing. He, he was just someone who really loved me. I felt it genuinely he loved me. All the Howard Stern fame bullshit aside, I felt the guy had a genuine affection for me. And, you know, I've detailed over the years all of Ralph's fuck-ups and this and that. But the, the bottom line is Ralph was a trustworthy dear friend who made me laugh every time I was with him and 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 the trust and the uh, admiration we had for each other was genuine Ralph was over uh, my home in the summer this past summer we had a lot of big laughs he was busting my balls about I, I don't turn the air conditioning on in the summer and he was almost ready to pass out <laughs> from the fucking wow. heat in my house yeah uh, uh, he came over with James, James who worked for John Barbados, and they were helping me get ready for my daughter's wedding. And uh, Ralph had um, designed two suits with uh, James, and Ralph was making, Ralph was so talented, he could sew, he could make shirts, he could do all kinds of things. It was it, The guy was really like a MacGyver, a jack of all trades. He was really that talented. Again, I think he could have done tremendous things with his talent. But... Uh, and I pushed him in a lot of directions to do stuff, but he he just was very content to work for me. And so uh, they were over over the summer. But literally, I spoke with Ralph the night before he died. He was in he was admitted into the hospital. 
and he was a very in a very um, let's say emotional state. And he told me he was embarrassed that he was emotional in front of me. And I said, "Ralph, I'm your friend. I'm your buddy. You go ahead and you you cry because you're in a you're in a tough situation. You've been given a tough diagnosis, but we're going to get through this. Don't worry, man. We're going to get you through this." I've already been in touch with doctors about your medical situation. I had it covered. And it calmed him down. But unfortunately, yesterday morning, they had to do a, a, a procedure, a very common procedure on him, but uh, his heart gave out. So he, he's, he's gone, and uh, I'm going to miss Ralph terribly. And I, it's been a very tough day for me yesterday. And... Uh, I'm still feeling it, and uh, last night was tough, and Beth wanted to come on the air and say a few words about Ralph, because I don't want us to be completely maudlin. There's so many funny things about Ralph, but uh, Beth is doing something for his family today, which, God bless her, she's an angel. She's uh, She got up at 4 o'clock this morning and is, is working with his family to make things easy on them for his sister I couldn't and his believe mother. she volunteered to do that. That was amazing. Yeah. So... Uh, you know, one of the things I have to thank Ralph for, my dear friend, and I'm going to miss you, Ralph. I'm the, he's the reason I met Beth. Yeah. He grabbed and, you uh, and dragged you out of the house that night, right? You didn't want to go yes. out. No, he, Ralph was at a party of a mutual friend of ours. And as he said to me, Howard is hot chicks. Hot chicks and lots of good food. Free food. Ralph loved free food. Uh, the one combination of my, he loved the most. <laughs> you know, there was a team involved. It was me and uh, Tony Coburn, who who did my hair, and uh, Ralph, who did all the uh, costuming, you know, and, and my look for, you know, I know, some look, but Ralph did the best he could with me. <laughs> Nothing fit right. But Ralph, you know, Ralph was great. Ralph was so attentive to me. He would be like... If I went on Letterman, he goes, listen, your, your sock is showing and you can see leg. You can see your leg and it's not a good look. You know, he would he he cared about how I looked on camera. He would go to all my photo shoots with me when I used to be into that kind of thing. Uh, Ralph was with me every step of the way. And the three of us spent a lot of time together, Tony, Ralph and myself. And I had to call Tony last night to break the news to her or yesterday morning. Rather, I, she was one of the first people i thought of and she was she's she's hysterical crying right now she loved ralph very much she was very good to him always invited him over to have uh dinner with uh, her family and stuff yeah you know ralph was fiercely um he was adamant about not having a partner he 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 goes you he said to me on my last phone call with him which was the night before he died he said you know what you were right you know how much I love being on my own, he said. But right now, I wish I had someone in my life who could, you know. I said, well, listen, Ralph, you're fortunate that you have me and you're going to have Beth and you got your sister and you got your mother. We're gonna, you're going to get her through this, okay. But he was really profoundly sad that he didn't have a great love in his life. And he felt very alone and, and he felt he had made a mistake not putting more effort into attaching himself to someone. But, um, look, you know, when I called Tony, she was like, oh, my God, how can this be? How can Ralph be gone? We all, we, we spend so much time together. It's, it, it just doesn't seem, it, it, it just seems impossible that he is gone. I called a bunch of people. Of course, I called Robin first, then Tony. Then I called, I called John Stamos because Stamos was close with Ralph. I thought he'd want to know. Uh. It was crazy. I didn't believe Ralph was gone. Uh, G Gary called me right after yesterday's show. And he said to me, I got this call from a woman claiming to be Ralph's sister. He goes, I don't know if it's real, but she's saying Ralph died. And my heart sank because in my, you know, Gary didn't know that Ralph was in the hospital. I, I Very few people knew. I told Robin. That was it. And... Uh,